Welcome to Encounter Shawnee Mission. I'm Brandon Baudry. And I'm Anna Everett. Hey Brandon, do you remember your first spelling bee? I actually do. It was pretty embarrassing. Alrighty, let's go over to Apache Elementary to check out their annual spelling bee. The word is cork. Groundhog. L V U. Bounce. The word is jump. Jump. J U M P. Jump. Well, I became the sponsor of the spelling bee about four years ago. The spelling bee has been that going on correct. for decades, as far as I know. I can't think of a time when we weren't that doing that. Correct. So we hand out practice lists for the kids, and they study them, take them home, and they do a practice spelling bee in their classroom. And then the top two spellers are the ones who come to the school spelling bee. And then we have alternates in case they can't make it. It's basically having a mental challenge, because you know how they usually have more physical than mental, so it's a lot funner. My favorite word is debilitate. And I also have another. It's a mustache. I like this too. After this, the winner and the runner-up will head to the uh, the Johnson County Spelling Bee, and that's on February 13th. And then the winner of that spelling bee will go on to the Sunflower State Spelling Bee in March. With photographer Brock Burnett, this has been Alex Kemp reporting for Encounter Shawnee Mission. You know, those kids definitely did a lot better than I did. Yeah, they probably did. It's always been important for students to have heroes and someone to look up to. Let's see how students at East Antioch are honoring their heroes. The students at East Antioch Elementary School took part in a wax museum showcasing their American heroes. Uh, the wax museum has been going on for eight years that I know of. When we start picking our heroes, we talk about the difference between an idol and a hero. And then they could choose, this year they could choose a historical hero or a contemporary hero. I do give them a list that they can look at, but they, I also encourage them to talk to their parents, and then we, I meet with them and we choose, they decide on three that they would like to research, and then I, we narrow it down, uh, the student and I narrow it down to what would be best. My favorite part about the Wax Museum is seeing them dressed up in costume the day of the Wax Museum and all the, parent, the parents' reaction and the teachers' reactions to how well they do. My hero is Anne E. Dunwoody, and I was, a four, I was the first female four-star journal in the U.S. Army. When I first was doing research, I thought something pretty amazing was Anne's great-grandfather, grandfather, father, brother, sister, and niece and husband were all in the army. My hero is um, Temple Grandin because she just proved that anything's possible. Well, Temple Grandin had autism and but she invented a whole bunch of things and she couldn't even speak until she was five. I saw her movie at the beginning and then when this came up I was like I want to be Temple Grandin because that's the first thing that came to my mind. With photographer Evan Johnson, this has been Jack Arndt reporting for Encounter Shiny Mission. Anna, who was your fifth grade hero? Mine was Bethany Hamilton. It's good to know. Westridge Middle School has a very diverse population and celebrates the differences among students. Let's take a look at Diversity Day. At Westridge Middle School, they celebrate their diversity on this special day. Diversity Day is a tradition here at Westridge where we do all sorts of activities separate from our regular curriculum to celebrate the diversity in our school since we do have such a diverse population. Some years there's a particular theme that we focus on. This year with the introduction of all of the new technology, we've been asking the question how do we use technology and social media to either plug in to our diverse world or actually shut ourselves off and isolate ourselves from it. There are a lot of different things we will be seeing today. We'll be watching a play, we'll be listening to a band, and we'll be eating food that people brought. My favorite part is just experiencing all of the different things we have going on in school. I provide the music portion, the kids get to see the play, 
There's also um, artwork that the students do and artwork contests. In the past, we've brought in different speakers, um, different dancers. Diversity Day teaches me about different people's cultures. Usually at school, we don't learn about all that. And it's really interesting to hear about other people. With photographer Elena Blakely, this has been Katherine Allison reporting for Encounter Shawnee Mission. Hey, Brandon, how are the Chinese acrobats at Sunflower Elementary? Oh, they were awesome. It takes a lot of time and effort to get the show together. Let's see how they did. Today we are here at Sunflower Elementary School to watch the Chinese acrobats put on a show for all the students. Let's see what they have in store for us today. Well, I mean, it, it, the whole assembly kept the kids' attention. Uh, the, the, um, well, the abilities of the, of the performance was, was pretty impressive. Uh, and I don't know if the kids can read in, into so much of the dedication that it takes to do something like that, even to put on something like that. Uh, that had a, a lot, uh, a lot of academic, a lot, of, a lot of academic and uh, obviously cultural uh, aspects to it. Um, talking about symmetry, the way the performance was in, 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 in an art form, um, along with uh, um, you know learning something about the Chinese culture. When asked about the assembly, this is what Ethan had to say. Most of the assemblies are kind of boring and educational. This one was just fun. Uh, when the guy was balancing on the board and he was throwing stuff up on his head. That concludes the show here at Sunflower Elementary School. This has been reporter Brandon Baudry and photographer Skylar Stuckey reporting for Encounter Shawnee Mission. Whew, I wish I had their body control. I agree. Did you ever wonder what high school is going to be like in middle school? Definitely. Shawnee Mission West incoming freshman got an inside look with the Viking View event. Let's go on a tour. Well, good evening and welcome to our ninth grade orientation night, the Viking View. My name is Steve Lowe and it's a privilege to be serving your building as the principal. <laughs> Viking View gives an opportunity for the incoming freshmen who are eighth graders currently at Westridge uh, to come on to come in and look have a view of what the high school life would be like. We mainly focus on the curriculum part of it, not so much the athletics, because this gives the parents an opportunity of the courses we do offer at the high school versus what they're going through right now in middle school. So this is pretty much an overall eye-opening experience for them that, you know, lets them know, wow, we need to start think of, thinking about what path to take uh, once you're done with high school. So that's what Viking View does, is provides that opportunity, is that eye-opening experience of all the opportunities they can have in high school. We asked students who attended Viking View what they were most excited about for high school. That I get to be on the dance team. Well, I'm going to try out to be on the dance team. <laughs> to meet new people and have new classes. The program pretty much has grown year after year, and I'm, I'm pretty much basing it on the enrollment numbers So, and the community. So the West community is very involved as it is, so this just gives them an overall picture of uh, what they will see in the high school, especially for those students that haven't uh, been or have had brothers and sisters who have been through uh, Shawnee Mission West and so now it's their opportunity to see it. We asked students why they attended Viking View. To see how high school is and all the classes that they have. Just to get to know the teachers that I might have for next year. With photographer Emma Stam, this has been Meredith Clark reporting for Encounter Shawnee Mission. I can get a free iPad if I click on this ad in 30 seconds. No, 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 don't do that. You should have really attended the new safety assembly over at Comanche Elementary. The changing technology is increasing the access to the internet. It's, it's a good thing in general, but with those positives, there's risks associated with using the internet. And kids of all ages, younger and younger, are having more and more access to the internet. They're coming into contact with people they wouldn't otherwise. So uh, the safety issue is the biggest key. I work for Boys and Girls Club in Lawrence, and that is our number one uh, priority when it comes to our club members is safety. So it's very important that we get out and talk about how to be safe, not just when we're at club or when we're at school, but when we're using the internet. It makes you safer. The most important thing is you shouldn't go and meet people online. 
And the advantages of net safety is it really, one, for us, it gives the students and the staff a common language that we can talk about, and for the parents, too, to give them some type of idea of what we can do to help keep the kids safe at home as well. Some kids have a better knowledge than others of internet safety, but you know we've done our part here at the school to try to help inform them of what it means to be safe on the internet, and then bringing in net smarts also helps with that as well. We talk a lot about internet safety here at school, but so many of our kids are uh, tempted and challenged with so many things these days that we didn't necessarily have exposure to as kids, so I absolutely believe it's something that they're going to use and apply. With photographer Brock Nelson, this has been Emma Santi reporting for Encounter Shawnee Mission. Now, aren't you happy you didn't click on that ad? Yeah. Okay, wait. 10, 20, 30. What are you doing? I'm practicing my counting for the 100th day of kindergarten. Oh, just like the students here at Overland Park Elementary. Ms. Denning's kindergarten class celebrated their 100th day of school. Let's take a look at their celebration. The 100th day of school is um, a big deal for kindergarten. We've been in school for 100 days and are working hard to learn all of our numbers up to 100. So we have a big party and celebration. Um, and we work on counting to 100 in different ways by 10s and by 5s and by 2s and by 1s. And so it's just a good party. We're going to be doing four different activities during our um, celebration. One activity, they're going to be using 10 different snacks and putting them together to make a trail mix. Um, 10 of each for 100. And then they'll be making a 100 day hat with 100 stickers on it. They'll be using the numbers 100 to make a face um, for 100 and they'll be using Q-tips to paint 100 hats. A big hit of the day seemed to be making the hats. My favorite part was doing hats. From station to station, the kindergartners seem to be enjoying themselves on this day. With photographer Morgan Mock, this has been Sinclair Miramontes reporting for Encounter Shawnee Mission. Students are learning new culinary techniques with the help of a guest chef. Let's see what's cooking at the Broadmoor Bistro. Here at Broadmoor Bistro, students got the opportunity to learn and cook with professional chef Tom Condren. I'm from, uh, I'm from the west end of London, a place called Chelsea, England, uh, with the number one Chelsea premier football team. Thank you very much. But um, uh, I grew up in the west end of London. Uh, I grew up to a, a Royal Marine family. My dad was a three-star general in the British Royal Marines. So uh, we grew up a very much of a military family, just like here in, in America. Uh, but I got into cooking when I was 14 and kind of stayed with it and uh, devoted most of my life to it. A brief stay in the military, uh, college, but uh, been cooking since I was 14. You know, they're great. Um, you know, to get a 15 and 16 year old engaged in something is pretty tough this day and age. I have a 16 year old and a 13 year old. And uh, so to see them so engaged in what they're doing and learning not just a career, but life lessons, cooking is just a life lesson as well. It's, it's fantastic, you know, they're, they're not on their iPhones and they're not on their computers and their laptop stuff. They're, they're actually working and, and learning something and they're all engaged, they're all very quiet, very, they're hard working kids, it's great. With photographer Ben Carland, this has been Andrew Ferguson reporting for Encounter Shawnee Mission. I don't know about you, but I'm headed toward the Broadmoor Bistro. You should definitely take me with you. Have you ever tried walking in someone else's shoes? Not really, but the students at Horizons documented their walk. At Horizons High School, the students in the digital design class have been working on a project that portrays an average day in the life of a student. Life in a Day is a documentary that was done by some filmmakers where they, their project was to collect YouTube clips from people all around the world from July 24th, 2010. Every clip that was submitted was taken that day showing what people were doing in their everyday lives. What we've done at Horizons is we took an entire day to film or take images of what was going on in the students' day at Horizons, in their classroom, at lunch, on the bus, uh, after school. Whatever was going on, they had permission that day to use their phones or their cameras and take pictures. We ended up with, oh, between 800 to 1,000 images and videos that the kids are now putting together into their own individual movies. In my film, I plan to have, like, the start of my day to, like, the end of the day, consisting of, like, everybody else's pictures, too. 
like in it, so like a collaborative video of everybody else's day, like kind of like mixed in one. My favorite thing about the class is probably learning the new like programs and things in it that we get to use on like computers and like learning more into that because. The students are using iMovie to complete this project. Um, digital design is a class in which we teach a lot of the software applications. Since they all have MacBooks, it worked out great. We can learn how to use iMovie for this project. It has to do with people they care about, with the school they care about. So they're more engaged in the project because they like looking through all the images and um, they're learning the software at the same time. Uh, at the end, we're going to have a fun popcorn day, pop and popcorn, and watch everybody's movie. So it will be um, kind of an exciting project for them to share with their classmates. With photographer Tanner Adams, this has been Bailey Erickson reporting for Encounter Shawnee Mission. Anna, how is the spelling bee at Rising Star Elementary? It was great. It's always so entertaining to see the little kids step up and spell words in front of their peers. Students at Rising Star Elementary competed in a school-wide contest to determine the winner who will represent the school at the district-wide spelling bee. The colors that gave me was, um, I believe in myself. Um, it's easy. You don't. All you have to do is really spell it. If you don't really spell it right, it's n like it's not a really big deal, kind of. Spelling is just something that I'm really good at. It's not really like a passion of mine, but um, I just did the spelling bee because I wanted to try it out. Well, I didn't know we didn't have to do the hard side at first, so I started spelling like words like synecdoche and stuff. Um, but then my teacher told me that we didn't have to do the back, so I started um, studying words like emporium and minnow. There's going to be like a lot of people staring at me. I don't like being the center of attention. With photographer Michael McCosh, this has been Anna Eschrick reporting for Encounter Shawnee Mission. First graders at Pawnee Elementary came to Shawnee Mission West to see A Year with Frog and Toad. Let's leap on over and see how it went. Hi, I'm Isaiah McKay with Encounter Shawnee Mission, and I'm here at Shawnee Mission West awaiting the arrival of Pawnee Elementary first graders to see a special screening of Frog and Toad. Shawnee students and teachers were excited to have the opportunity to see the first act of Shawnee Mission West production. Are you guys excited? Yes. Yeah? Students filled the auditorium along with other Shawnee Mission West feeder schools. During the show, Pawnee students were an engaged and interactive audience. It's a fact. It's indisputable. You know where rutabaga comes from, don't you? After the show ended and before loading the buses and heading back to Pawnee, students shared their thoughts on the production. I like the play because it's colorful. I like the cookie part and the snail part. That was a really good show. With photographer Kelsey Eisenberger, this has been Isaiah McKay, reporting for Encounter Shiny Mission. I was actually in a year with Frog and Toad, and the little kids thought we were famous, and it was adorable. So now you know what it's like to be me. As always, thank you for watching Encounter Shiny Mission. I'm Brandon Baudry. And I'm Anna Eschrick. Have a great day.